Day 11 of uh, airplane building. Haven't even started doing any airplane building yet today. Um, one of the things I'm learning um, is that a big part of building airplanes is building tools to help you build airplanes, not just buying tools. And so one of the things that I'd wish I'd had a week ago um, is the cradles that I ended up making a mess today. Um, making these small but very simple um, cradles that I can set the horizontal stabilizer in while I'm working on it. But really more importantly, trying to get the skin mated to the skeleton without anything to maybe hold the shape of the skin a little bit, getting these uh, ribs in place, this would have been much easier to do had I had this in the first place. So I've built a set of these. Here's a nice little scratch. Um, I built two pairs of these so that when I go to build the rest of the horizontal stabilizer, um, you can see the spar here, the rear spar extending out. So there's the other pair sitting down below. Oop. There. So anyways, it wasn't really that big of a project once I had an idea what I was going to do. As far as the horizontal stabilizer goes, I got the replacement parts that I needed, which are mostly this assembly right here. These two ribs, these uh, doublers and reinforcement plates that I had messed up before. So yesterday I got a lot done. Um, I took care of fixing the problem with the skin on the, um, on the rudder. And then I did all of this yesterday, including fabricating parts and making the necessary cuts on parts. These ribs, for example, right here, when you get them, they're not pre-punched at all. So it's a process of fitting and cutting and aligning everything so that you can actually make the holes, uh, match drill the holes to the skin and then also the, the rib flanges here where they pass through and made up through this um, front spar doubler reinforcement plate thingy. Anyways, it's a lot. So I'm gonna get started on this side now. The, la the first thing that I have to do is to disassemble all of this, uh, drill a few more holes um, here in the tabs on that side, and then I'll start doing all of that over here. Before we get into the time lapse, I wanted to uh, revisit the uh, front spar, the horizontal stabilizer, and specifically the relief cuts that need to be made uh, where the tabs are bent. Here you can see the end result of um, using the doubler as a template and then cleaning it up with uh, files after making a cut with Dremel. It came out much better, but also notice there are only four holes in that thing. Uh, so once this is sandwiched in between the uh, doublers and the splice angles, as you see here, and all those clecos, there is a ton of match drilling that has to happen there. And I'm showing you this because somewhere toward the end of the video, I'm going to mess that up right there. <laughs> So what we're looking at here is the um, horizontal stabilizer. That is the left side that I'm uh, currently disassembling. Things are a little bit out of sequence, obviously, because I had re replacement parts that had to come in. Um, so it had to be all be kind of fit back together so that those uh, ribs could be fitted. The two inboard uh, ribs, the fore and aft rib, um, that, as I mentioned, don't come uh, with any holes along the flanges, uh, so they need to be match drilled to the skin, and then also where they meet the forward spar, where they kind of create that sandwich, those holes need to be created, um, as well as actually cutting out part of that forward rib, the rear flange, to, to get it to fit around the splice angles. Uh, if you come upon that and you're trying to figure out how to make that measurement, because it is a little bit awkward, um, what I've found out as I was trying to figure it out is that on the plans, it's actually one-to-one -one scale. So you can actually place that part, um, just lay it over the plans and 
use that as a template uh, to mark where your cuts occur. So now that that is done, I'm reassembling it and I'm going to start working on the right side um, of the horizontal stabilizer uh, to do the same thing, which is uh, get the whole um, get the whole skeleton for the right side assembled, um, fit the skin for the first time all to ultimately get to the point where we can um, do the same thing with those the two inboard uh, ribs. Again, they need to be matched real to the skin and they also need to um, be uh, drilled out uh, to create that sandwich between the forward rib, the, uh, the forward rib, the spar, the doubler, and then finally the um, the aft rib, um, which all happens once it's kind of assembled and then clamped into uh, the assembly. What you see me doing here is using a um, using a straight edge and a soldering iron that has had the tip dulled so that I can um, leave as much of the blue on as possible um, and only uh, remove the blue vinyl in the places where I need to do work, you know, uh, detaching rivets and whatnot. Uh, it's not a very fun process. It takes a really long time. This is sped up 50 times. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to do much more of that. Um, scratches are inevitable. Um, so I mentioned earlier that I did end up messing this up. And as we get closer to the end of this video, um, right toward the end, you'll see me just sort of staring at it. Um, but I, the easy way, easiest way to explain it is as you're watching this, you can see that I'm constantly sort of moving from one set of cradles to the other so I can access either the top or the bottom of the horizontal stabilizer as I'm assembling it, putting in clecos, match drilling, whatever it is that I'm doing. And in that process, it's not very difficult to lose your sense of orientation. And it's not a, it's not a perfectly symmetrical um, assembly. So there's a definite top and a definite bottom. And where that's most noticeable is that um, where the the two halves of the front spar come together, those uh, reinforcement angles, I think one's called a reinforcement angle, one's called a splice angle, they have different hole patterns and a different shape. And at some point right around here, when I'm fitting it on, I ended up putting one of those angles in uh, upside down. And, uh, but it fit well enough, like it wasn't any trouble to get it in, um, and then somewhere in here, as I'm getting into it, I notice a couple of holes. It looks like I, I think that I've forgotten to match drill uh, a couple of holes in that forward spar assembly um, without noticing that the reason that the holes didn't match is because it was, in fact, upside down. Um, so I get to redo all that all over again. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> 